Hey everyone, and uh, welcome to a start started panel that we have here, where we'll be discussing the topic of how to build a successful career in free to play games. Uh, I'm really excited to chat about this. It's a topic very near and dear to my heart. So I want to go ahead and introduce everybody first. Uh, so starting off, we have uh, Purnima with us. Purnima is a director of design at Zynga. She has been part of the gaming industry for over 15 years and has had many roles varying from game designer to producer to studio head and entrepreneur. And she's currently a director of design, uh, design at Zynga, like I said, and she's also a Hall of Fame inductee at the Global Women in Games Award 2020. So welcome, Purnima. Uh, uh, moving on, we also have Karan, who is heading the pro who is heading product in Nukebox Studios, where he's released the Google Player's Choice Award winning game of 2020, which is SpongeBob Krusty Cookoff. And in his seven long year career in free to play games, he's launched five titles and has worked on over 10 games. Hey, Karan. Hello. And we also have Shilpa. Shilpa is a marketing and strategy lead at Simple Studios. After running her own travel market marketplace for three plus years, she worked with India's biggest vernacular social media networks, ShareChat. Now her team has won awards for many of their games like Masala Express, Masala Madness, and Super Krishna Crush. I had a chance to play some of those. Those were really fun. Uh, and yeah, I just want to welcome Shilpa to the panel as well. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Vic. Uh... And last but not least, uh, I'm a product lead at Zynga. I'm Vic. Uh, I've been part of the gaming industry for many years, I think about eight years now. And I've been part of various monetization and live ops teams. Uh, this was at firms like EA, DNA Games, Machine Zone, Amazon Games, and so on, where I worked on eight different gaming titles, grossing up about $4 billion or so. So yeah, just a long time in the gaming industry. Uh, and I want to jump right into this with the first question, you know, starting with the really simple one. You know, a lot of us have enjoyed playing PC and console games when we grew up, but we never really thought about a career in video games that, you know, that could be something real. So how did you break into or pivot your career to a role in the gaming industry? And, you know, we can start off with Purnima. Hey, thanks, Vic. Um, so, yeah, my thing was I was an engineering graduate and I was looking for programming uh, opportunities. And uh, this is 15 years ago. So India barely had gaming companies per se. Uh, there was just like, uh, you know, two main ones and a few small ones here and there. Uh, one of my college mates was already working at this company and he said, hey, we have an opening for a programmer. So why don't you come interview? And uh, that's how I ended up in a gaming company. So it was purely by luck. Uh, the interesting part of how it pivoted me into game design from a programming role is what happened there where, uh, you know, they were looking for a game designer. And again, game design as a discipline, uh, even now it's comparatively niche. Uh, back then, it was almost non-existent. Uh, so they really were looking for a game designer. And my friend happened to refer my name to them. Like they said, you already have her as a programmer. But, you know, back in college, I used to design Age of Empire campaigns and World of Warcraft, Warcraft 3 campaigns. And uh, he used to be one of my, uh, you know, buddies who I used to send this for feedback and test it out. So he said, you know, she's been interested in doing something like that. Why don't you give her a chance? And they did that. Uh, they handed me Dungeons and Dragons manuals uh, and uh, said, you have one month's time to come up with a, a mobile role-playing game, much to the likes of Neverwinter Nights. Um, mm -hmm. And said, then after that, we'll assess if you are good enough to qualify as a game designer. And uh, yeah, that's how it started. And my first GDD that I wrote was a hundred pager. So uh, I am. I think. I think. I think it was all D and D that made me fall in love with the universe of creating it. Like I realized that as a designer, I am now able to create something like that for an audience to play. Uh, something that I enjoyed uh, while playing all these games that are my all-time favorites. So I think that's when I fell in love with game design, and uh, it's primarily been part of my journey. Wow, this is really interesting to hear. It's funny, I used to actually design Age of Empires campaigns too. And I used to also program bots for Counter-Strike. So it's funny, you know, how what we used to do you know, back in the day, just as gamers, actually led to a career for us. That's really cool to hear. Uh, yeah, what's your story, Karan? Yeah, uh, thanks, Vic. Uh, uh, so as a, uh, for me, it's always about the first step being the hard one. Right. Mm -hmm. So I am by profession, I am uh, a mechanical engineer. 
uh, and my first job was with uh, 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 this company called Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited, where I was a QA engineer and I used to work on these big machines called pulverizers. They are they are these they are the machines which crush coal in power plants. So that was my first job. Uh, so it it did have its own set of learnings. Uh, but over time, I knew that that uh, definitely that is not my calling. Um, it took around you know a six month long period of introspection for me to uh, you know finally set on some sort of a direction. So I know I've I've always loved uh, playing games uh, even when I was a kid. Uh, I, I've had all the consoles, uh, PS, uh, uh, you know, the cartridge ones, Sega, PS1, PS2, PS3. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, uh, I've been, uh, I've been a huge fan of playing games, and I thought, you know, why not have a career in this? Um, so that was the beginning of, you know, some sense of a direction of, okay, this is what I may want to do, uh, but then how do I start, right? So. Uh, I think thankfully, since we are in in this uh, digital age, there, there is a lot of content available out there for you to get your hands dirty in whatever you want to learn. Um, so I, uh, as in college, and I uh, and I took a very uh, I, I took a six month course on uh, animation. So they taught a ZBrush and all of those tools, but I was so bad at it. Uh, <laughs> that, that that was that was not my cup of tea. Um, I also tried my hand at, uh, you know, some Unity tutorials and though I was able to uh, handle some of that, but um, I I didn't feel like it was, uh, uh, it was not what I would really like to do. Um, um, it was this time that I decided that, you know, uh, maybe I should just, uh, you know, take the leap and uh, work, uh, work work at a place, work at a gaming place. So I took a uh, internship at a very small firm called Fun Element. I used to make uh, flash games for brands. So just imagine this guy uh, uh, jumping uh, like like a dangerous Dave game, but for Pep student. So those are the kind of uh, uh, flash games that the, uh, they used to make. And that itself uh, was super interesting. I met a lot of uh, great folks. And that's when I understood uh, uh, what this industry is all about. And that's where I came to know about this function called being a PM. Uh, uh, now that I had a much better understanding of what I wanted to do, then I had to trace my steps back of, you know, how I, how do I get a job as a PM? And that set the journey uh, for me, you know, uh, based on my understanding uh, of the market at that point in time, I, I thought maybe uh, an MBA would be required to uh, uh, get a job as a PM. So I studied, uh, got that and finally landed my first role at Lions Games. The point I wanted to make here is, since the time I decided to uh, join gaming and till the time I actually got my first job, it was almost four years, right? Uh, And it was four years of a lot of uh, hard work, a lot of trial and error, a a lot of uh, pivoting to finally find out something that I genuinely enjoy doing. And I like being a PM because, uh, 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 you know, like I, I like data. I like the data aspect of uh, things. I'm good at it. Uh, I, I, um, one of the channels which I uh, most follow on uh, YouTube right now is this channel called Number File, which just talks about numbers. And that's, I, I love numbers. Uh, but uh, that combined with my passion for playing games, uh, uh, I felt it was uh, it was a good mix. So I think to sum it up, I would um, use the word vector, right? So vector is uh, uh, unlike speed, it also contains direction. So whatever uh, you know, whatever uh, uh, path, whatever vector that you want to go on, uh, uh, you need a lot of uh, you, know, you need to try your hand at multiple things. You need to be extremely patient and keep going at it and obviously work hard. Yeah, that's a really interesting story. And the, and the vector part really resonates with me. I love to think about that because, yeah, you know, it's not only that you have to, you know, go, you, you, you go fast and you try something. You also need a direction. And yeah, that's, that's a really interesting way to put it. Thanks for that. And I, I totally agree with you on the number side, by the way. I was recently nerding out about the Excel World Championships where people go and compete about MS Excel. So I totally get it. I think as PMs, all of us lives our lives in Excel. So that's always the fun part. Uh, yeah, and now we have Shilpa. Shilpa, I'd love to hear your story. 
So my story is uh, is totally different. Uh, for me, gaming was a very very elusive uh, place where only the chosen few can work. Uh, so I never thought and I never dreamt of gaming. But I really love playing games. Especially uh, my love for games started uh, with Candy Crush back uh, in two thousand twelve. So. Uh, it, but I have worked on consumer products, and uh, since I am part of marketing and strategy both, uh, I have realized that you know again and again one thing as a part of product strategy uh, would come, and uh, sometimes in marketing strategy would come as do something around games. As Karan said, he used to make uh, he used to work with a company which made games for Pepsodent. So similar things were popping into our mind. So that was. From marketing perspective, perspective, but from from product perspective, it was always gamification. This this uh, you know uh, diamond world uh, is is gamification. We have tried, I have tried, and that is how I gotten to read about it. I started to uh, realize that it is different, and and if you know that gamification is very very hard to uh, do by a product company. And now, since I'm into this ecosystem, I know why it is so hard because they to uh, take it in a different perspective. For them, gamification is more like a product feature rather than an experience. And uh, from gamification, I thought, okay, let me uh, research about it, what it takes, and how can I get into it. And because I, th- at that time, I was thinking about transitioning into a new company, new role. And uh, fortunately, I uh, ended up joining Simple Studios. And I'm very, very happy. We have done exciting work and I have learned so much. So, uh, yes, it was there. But again, elusive world. I did not think that I could do that uh, job or I could get into that uh, world of chosen few. And and that's how, you know, I didn't think of it. And that's where I think a lot of people, they don't consciously think that they can get into gaming. Because sometimes, you know, it can be a mental barrier because there are not a lot of resources out there. So I'm very happy that this conference is happening because it is going to give perspective. It is going to, uh, you know, show a gateway that, yes, you can get into gaming. So, yeah, that's my story from gamification to Gaming marketing, yeah. yeah. I think it, it's been similar for all of us. Like, I'll share a little bit about, you know, how I went through. Like, I had a typical, you know, uh, journey as well. I, I was a computer science engineer. I came to the U.S. to do my master's in computer security and management. So nothing related to games at all, except that I used to, to try and play competitively, co- competitively during undergrad, you know, Age of Empires, Counter-Strike. And I thought, hey, I'm such a cool gamer. You know, I play competitive games and all of that. But uh, I used to work in New York in consulting and banking, you know, so nothing games whatsoever. And, uh, you know, like we were saying, it was a friend that actually helped me out, too. I was visiting them in California and his roommate worked at Disney Games. And he's like, hey, you like games so much. Why don't you interview? And I'm like, gaming is a real thing. Like you can get a job in games. Like I didn't know that. And like I was cramming all night. I'm like, okay, I work on a product. I'm a manager, so I must be a product manager. So I went in, I'm like, what is this ARPU and DAU? I should read up about all of this. And I spent all night cramming. I did not get the job because I didn't know squat about the business of games. But you know, that kind of lit a fire. And I also came in from the number side. So like current, I started approaching it with PM, but then I actually went into the data analytics side. And that's how, you know, after interviewing for a very long time. So it also took me like two and a half years of preparing and talking to people and really understanding what can I do and where can I fit. So I think it's been a common theme for all of us, like whether it's a friend or whether it's analytics or whether you know, it's gamification, there's something different that brings us to the industry. And then all of us are like, wait, something we enjoyed on the site is a real job. But, you know, one part, the point that you brought up, Shilpa, was really interesting is that Everyone plays games, but they don't think of gaming as a career choice. And what is it that you think stops people from thinking of the gaming industry as a long term career option versus, let's say, tech or finance? And, you know, how can you change that perspective? 
So firstly, uh, because uh, there needs to be outlet where people talk about the career. People mm-hmm. say like events like this or, or blogs like, uh, you know, uh, n- n- Deconstructor of Fun or, or uh, Meta Masters mm-hmm. or, or Department of Play. These kind of mm-hmm. blogs where people can read about it and see that, yes, there are people. Uh, if you see the number of, I'll, I'll talk about women in gaming. So very, very few people are there. So the moment I saw Punema's profile, I went and I... I was like, wow, she has done great work. Earlier, I didn't know about it before I came to gaming. So I think you need a lot of, uh, not just formal institution, but informal ways also. Apart from this, uh, curriculum would also help. I think curriculum in especially game designing or uh, game PM uh, certifications, they can also help, but they are uh, traditional pathways. But uh, untraditional or new thing is people seeing People like you, Karan and Poonima doing this work and they getting excited. Uh, and as well as I also think that gaming companies, they can also, when they are launching games, they can also say that we are looking and, and they can have different marketing campaigns for their recruitment strategies. Oh, okay. so that's where it can help. Yeah. yeah. That's really interesting. I never thought about that. Yeah, launch a game and say, hey, if you want to work for us, you have to come come join and you get 5,000 gold in your game if you, if you get yeah. through. So, <laughs> <laughs> that would be a really cool campaign. But you touched on, you know, community versus game design. And I know Poonama was talking about game design earlier. So Poonama, like, which one do you think? Like, do you think, you know, is, is it the community that could help, you know, more formal training or something else altogether? Uh, I think, uh, you know, adding to what Shilpa already said, some of the other things we have to consider is that gaming is a slightly expensive hobby. Uh, And it is not something that's relevant to uh, Indian households, right? Like we still look at uh, having a hobby as gaming as a waste of time. Mm -hmm. And this was true for many other things, right? Like when when sports used to be there, if someone wants to go play gully cricket, they're like, oh, you're wasting your time and all Mm -hmm. of that. And today there are parents who are taking them to cricket academies to train. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so the awareness has to be even from people who are like parents who are getting there. Like, even when I started, I didn't know about gaming as an industry at all. Like, my, forget gaming, I didn't know about many things, uh, like, a lot of other options. I had, like, okay, I know I can get into banking, engineering, doctor. Like, these are my only roles that were available to me, and I had to pick one. That's it. I didn't know I could be, like, an event manager. I didn't know I could uh, pursue, you know, a music direction as a hobby, like, or as a career, right? I, I didn't have awareness that I could make a career out of it. I could make money. I could sustain myself. Uh, You know, one of the things that Shilpa spoke about, which is, you know, there are only these chosen ones who got into Mm -hmm. there. I think that's still a very common thing. And in a way, it is true because of the access that you have, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, When it comes to, say, something like game design, for example, you need to have good communication skills. Uh, you need to have a basic command over the English language, especially. Now, in India, when I come to talk about just purely from this country perspective, we don't have too much of a vernacular, uh, you know, gaming industry. Like most of our games are being done for the global audience. So when it comes to discipline like game design, where you're expected to write documents in English, because that's become like a common language that everyone uh, is using, Mm -hmm. Then coming from a a vernacular medium to get there, you need to upgrade yourself, right? And Mm -hmm. this has become a bit of a limitation and a hurdle for you to cross. Not saying you can't. There are so many amazing people who have managed Mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, Mm -hmm. But it is definitely a hurdle and we need to enable these people to train them for the right kind of skill set to get there. Uh, Oftentimes, we completely forget how important and relevant soft skills are. Uh, and we only focus on the other side of the spectrum and which prevents them from growing further. So mm-hmm. for me, I think at a grassroots level, awareness about the industry uh, and today the industry, you can make money in the industry, right? Like uh, mm-hmm. I was earning peanuts 15 years ago uh, for quite some time. And uh, now it's a lot better. Now the industry is a billion dollar industry. There's so much investment, so much money that's coming into it. Uh, so I think uh, to one sh- small call out again is because the industry is going growing so are the people who are wanting to grow come into the industry so mm-hmm. you need to like you know up yourself more what used to be okay to get into the industry 10 years ago is not mm-hmm. the cutoff anymore you need to be like way better 
so you know the struggle that you guys went through in understanding where you want to and to get there like karan mentioned four years it took him while today there are more resources to reduce that time frame perhaps but you still have to like work way harder like what karan entered at the barrier mm-hmm. might have like gone higher right like now even when we are hiring we are expecting someone to know way better than what we knew when we started off uh, so yeah i think awareness on ground grassroots level as well as from like a parents or stakeholders too yeah and you you bring up great point like i think we've talked about awareness we've talked about soft skills so far and you, you know like you were mentioning that you know like when i entered as a pm like i came from the analytics side and that's all you really needed to know and have an interest in the games industry you know 8 years later when i interview a junior pm i'm like have you read deconstructor of fun you know do you understand the basics of how to break down a game like you know you have more expectations because there are more resources so yeah that's really interesting what do you think karan yeah um, i think uh, both uh, shilpa and uh, punima spoke about uh, you know two different aspects of it the first thing is you need to know that a game industry like this exists i believe to a great extent uh, that uh, you know that problem has kind of been uh, adhered to uh, not uh, completely but to a great extent uh, the second thing uh, that they spoke about was okay a uh, gaming industry exists how do you feel about it like like hey uh, you're going to work in gaming like uh, i had uh, uh, you know i had a lot of uh, uh, discussions uh, with my parents if this was the right you know industry to get into uh, you know wh- whether it is stay uh, safe like is it of like is it just a, a fad or, or is it something serious so um, uh, the second point was about perception the third was about the you know knowledge base uh, of how to uh you know gain skill sets in this industry what all of these uh, uh you know all of these are uh, um, extremely important uh, i want to talk about another uh, aspect of it which is and this is in context to india uh is our risk taking ability right uh it is my I, it uh, it can be uh, you know it's my personal opinion that on an average if you take uh, let's say someone like us and someone like in, uh, someone from india uh on an average the risk taking ability is a little lower uh, uh um, um among uh, among indians it is good and bad uh you know it 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 uh, gives a lot of step it, it ensures stability uh i have i've always uh, like this one uh, statement about the indian economy and which is uh indian economy is never as bad or as good as you think it is and i think uh, uh and i think that uh, uh that talks about a need for stability uh but uh, it might uh, our need for you know uh, low risk uh though it is good for stability it is not as good for explosive growth right and 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 i guess that's where we are like we are like i think so near has spoken about in the in the first talk like we are at that cusp uh, you know like uh, we are at that uh, point where uh, we are going to grow so for that explosive growth to come there has to be that uh, uh, risk taking ability so now there is this population with a low risk taking ability now there are like just like let's say you treat it as a cohort in your game right so there are two things that you can do for it one either you change their risk taking ability you know uh, uh, which is always the very difficult to do behavior change is extremely difficult like if someone like uh, gives you the target of increasing retention it's it's a very difficult target as compared to let's say increasing revenue like you can you can make you no know, more revenue from the people you are uh, playing but you give them a, you give the designers and the pm the target of increasing retention now you're going to uh, you're going to have a, it's it's going to be super tough so either you try to you know change their behavior yes some people will change their behavior uh but i'm more interested in the other 80% which is acknowledging their risk taking their current risk taking behavior how can we create an environment uh where they are able to uh you know uh, uh have a a perception that hey this is not as risky as people think it is this industry uh and for that to happen what all do we need one is we need a world cup win right like we need a big hit but to support that 
uh right like uh, i'm sure a lot of indians are going to get into javelin throwing from now on uh, <laughs> uh uh but to support that we we also need a uh, uh an epic win of, yeah an epic win i was saying yes yes uh but to support that we also need a bunch of smaller wins uh, uh so just to cement the idea that it is this is not a one hit wonder like this is this is a stable continuous industry um obviously you know um, um investors putting faith in uh, people and you know uh, um, helping uh, um, helping the industry monetarily definitely helps but apart from that what we also need is peripheral industries so for example i think uh, edtech is a brilliant peripheral industry uh, and it has a lot of synergies with uh, gaming uh a lot of uh, these edtech comp- like and and i think uh, uh, arguably india is one of the big, you know biggest edtech uh, comp- uh, uh, nations um, in the world because obviously of a lot of investment and uh, uh, and and uh, and acquisitions but there is a nice peripheral industry for people to think that hey okay let me try this out but uh, if i don't get into this hey i can uh, uh, use my skill sets uh, somewhere else uh, there is a very nice peripheral in- industry with uh, for for uh, you know for techies like there are so many great startups uh, coming out and okay i tried my uh, you know my, i tried being a dev uh, uh, in a gaming company uh, but uh, you know i also have the option of doing this gaming uh, uh, with regards to pm like the skill sets that you acquire as a pm in gaming can be used in almost all industries uh, so i think the presence of these peripheral industries will give people the perception that hey like uh, it is not as risky to get into this industry um, and i think that's uh, that's the uh, uh, and and i think we are getting there uh, slowly but steadily Yeah, I mean, I totally see your point about risk. Like, I remember, uh, I don't know if all of you have seen that the Hasan Minhaj video that came out, you know, many years ago, uh, where he was talking about the game industry, and I was getting calls suddenly from all my friends. Hey, I saw this thing. Like, is the gaming industry risky? Like, I don't know what to do. You know, should I think about it? And I'm like, maybe, you know, it, for me, it just came down to kind of passion. You know, that, yes, you know, it's still an industry of passion where we join because we live and breathe games. and like you said you know if we can show all the different industries attached to it you know whether it is you know starting a own company entrepreneurially whether it's looking at gamification whether it's looking at edtech you know gaming isn't just about making a game there's much more surrounding that then we can attract more people and show them you know the kind of gamut of things out there versus oh you have to make a triple a game or a top grossing free to play game or there's nothing else So yeah, there's some really great points. And uh, one thing I did want to chat about, you know, because uh, this is something that came up a lot when we were trying to uh, set up this panel, is what you know, what role do I join in the game industry? You know, like for example, when we entered, you know, Karan and I entered more from the tech side. We entered from the tech, but then pivoted to game design, and then Shilpa, you know, pivoted to marketing and gamification. So I thought we can take a few moments and chat about you know our specific verticals and like if you were hiring somebody into that vertical what do you look for so maybe we can start from Purnima and start up talking a, a bit about game design like when you look for a game designer now what do you look for so um i think one one common misconception about game design is that we are the idea person <laughs> and uh, that that's all there is to it and i have had mm-hmm. a lot of uh, design chats with people who say mm-hmm. like yeah i have a great idea for the game and i'm like yeah mm-hmm. but how are you going to make it right like that's that's what game design is about if you mm-hmm. join a larger corporate or somewhere you might already have an idea like especially take some existing game that you start working on right yeah I, the core idea already exists so as a designer then is your job done like why do why are you needed if the idea is already uh, there Uh, so breaking down the idea into how to convert that into an executable is what game design is all about and mm-hmm. there are so many aspects of game design it's not just about okay i can envision the story i can envision the player's journey it's good but you still need to talk about what is the flow what is the control what is the system how are you going to balance it what are so many things that goes into creating that entire world it doesn't matter whether you're talking hyper casual or triple a right like eventually all of them have every aspect of it in different levels and different scopes 
so for me that's what i look for i also i look something i look for is potential and interest mm-hmm. and the ability to learn um mm-hmm. and i feel like someone needs to be a team player for me like they could be like the epic designer ever but if they are not a team player it's a no from me right like i am okay taking the hit where someone is not that skilled because that's something i feel that you can train learn and become better at if you have the right mindset for it but if you are not a team player changing that psychology is it's a much harder game so i go for potential basic game design knowledge and at least i'm talking from a very entry level perspective of course mm-hmm. when i'm hiring a senior or a lead the expectation is obviously more uh but uh, then again i think some of the common things is definitely the potential that i look for and understanding game design uh so sometimes i think we are all locked in our version of what game design is uh and i think this can go not just for game design but across the board that you know we are expecting a particular answer from a candidate because mm-hmm. that's what we have been told or we know how to do right but we are we are locking ourselves from understanding someone else's perspective and for a game designer especially i prefer not to have that right like you are always supposed to think outside the box come up with creative solutions and if you are going to be locked down in this pattern when you are interviewing someone then it becomes harder to uh, hire the right people and bring in that diverse mindset into the company or the team that you are building uh, so for me i think these are all the skill sets i look outside of base game design skill itself and there too i look for like rock solid foundation rather than terminologies and all of that i think terminologies keep changing uh, we come up with new ones but if i give them a scenario i just want to understand their thought process how would you break down that problem how would you arrive at the solution the solution itself could be wrong that they might have come with that's okay i want to know how they got there because that's what's important and th- the solution itself can be fine tuned and made into a better one like that's what experience brings you uh, so these are things and to make people understand that's beyond just an idea there's so much of like level design systems elements so many things that you have to start thinking about when you are looking at game design especially in india we don't have too many diversification of these disciplines uh, we don't have specific people who are designing only economy or you know there are some companies that do that but if you are entering at a mid level company you as a designer you are expected to all of it right yeah. so these are some things you have to take care of and that's what i try them to tell them and if you're looking at india uh free to play is definitely something that's prime so if you have worked all of your portfolio on a triple a game and you don't have any basic understanding of free to play that's tricky because you need to understand the industry or the company you're approaching uh learn about it understand what aspects of game design work there uh the principles don't change but how you apply them slightly varies so these are the things i look for that's pretty fair so you know and I, I, when you were saying things about game design a lot of that you know i see in pms too you know you know being a team player you know ability to break down critical problem so since we have your current representing pm here today uh, what do you think current what's similar for you and what's different from what punima said yeah uh, so uh, i would say uh, that there are broadly four traits of a mm-hmm. product manager right uh let's say four personas of a product manager one is the gamer mm-hmm. uh which means that you need to know uh, like punima said right like you need to know your uh, industry you need to know uh, you need to love gaming and uh, you just need to know about uh, games the second is the executioner uh this is the person who gets things done uh this is the person who uh, uh you know uh, comfort may uh um will prioritize uh um uh, will uh, will talk to people will resolve issues and will get things done that's the second persona uh the third one is the data guy you know like you uh, you know you you ask a question that person will throw excel sheets on your face uh uh and uh, and the fourth one is the growth hacker um this person is uh, um uh, this person is all about wild ideas uh what's like you know how can we how can we get growth here or how can we improve this and uh, the the constant uh 
uh, experimenting uh, sort of a person. Now, uh, obviously, there can be more aspects to this. Uh, keeping this in mind, there are two things uh, that need to happen after this. One, you need to know what you are, uh, um, uh, as a successful, uh, if you want to be good, you need to be at least average in all of these four and good at like one or more than one of these. Like I, I believe in that T structure of skill set uh, uh, where like um, you have an average understanding of other things, but you have the depth in, uh, in one. Uh, so you need to know who you are. Uh, so that uh, introspection uh, is extremely important. Now, uh, on the other side of things, you also need to know what the organization where you want to go needs, uh, because different skill sets are needed for different organizations. So it's, uh, for example, let's let's take the example of a um, of a company which is making a game from scratch. Uh, if you want, uh, you know, if you want to meaningfully contribute in that organization, one, you need to be an extremely like, uh, let's say you need to be a gamer because you need to know the in, in, ins and outs of the industry. And second, you need to be an executioner because uh, we all, like, we all, uh, I'm guessing, have been affected by scope creep and we, we all know how long it takes to build things. Uh, but you need to be able to get things done. Uh, uh, since there is no data, uh, like uh, when you're you know, when you're making a like when you're making a game from scratch, maybe you don't need to be very good at that. Uh, uh, but you definitely need to be a good gamer and a good executioner. Uh, on the other hand, let's say it's a live ops game, maybe we you can add more to this. Uh, you have to know your data because the game has been made, uh, an economy has been created, uh, 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 core loops features have been constructed. Uh, you now have to uh, uh, understand the data, understand what the players are uh, saying and uh, create and change your experiences along the way. So you need to be a data person. Uh, uh, and um, if you really, uh, uh, and, and you need to have some sort of a growth hacking mentality with you. Uh, because uh, if, if you want to make uh, the current live ops, if you want to go get into that, you know, top 100 grossing, you need to take a live ops game and just say like, what all do I need to do? Uh, so it, it's it's sort of like a Tetris game. You know, like yeah. there is a set of requirements uh, 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 that an organization needs based on the phase uh, it is in. And and then there is you uh, with a particular set of skills. Now, this doesn't mean that, hey, like if you are a one, if you are one kind of PM, you cannot, uh, you know, you, um, you cannot work in the other kind of mm -hmm. an industry. No, it just means that you need to put the effort in the right vector. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, so you need to be extremely self-aware of what your skills and weaknesses are, and once you have that goal set, hey, like I'm at place A, I need to be at place B. What all things do I need to do to get there? And okay. I think uh, uh, that's that's uh, uh, that's what it is for uh, PMs at least. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with both of you. I mean, uh, I think uh, emphasizing on live ops a little bit, like for me, a PM has to, you know, definitely be a people's person. You know, your job is to go talk to many, many different functions, you know, mar marketing, art, legal, finance. So if you can't, you know, get along with different people and lead by influence, you know, that becomes a cha challenging for a PM. You know, definitely being a data wrangler, you know, it's not enough to write SQL and, you know, be able to produce great, report great reports. It's about how you present it, how you synthesize size it down you know whether i'm communicating to a bi person a producer or my in my ep you know how can i present that data in different ways that it makes sense and in particular for live ops i think one of the things which uh, at least has worked well for me is just kind of being a little calm because when you launch games and when you go through live ops and you're making a few million dollars a day and revenue drops suddenly drops at half you're like oh no what do i do and everybody's freaking out so you know at that point if you can be calm and say okay Let's start. It. Is the game working? Are the servers up? You know, what are the last sale that we did? If you can go into kind of execution mode and write out the madness and then come back and do a, a retrospective and figure out what happened, 
I think in particular for live ops, that's really important as opposed to being a feature PM where you do have time to take decisions. So that's something unique for live ops that I wanted to add. Uh, and yeah, I'm just pivoting a little bit, asking Shilpa about game marketing because you know I've worked with marketing a lot from UA and brand. But you know, if you're hiring somebody, uh, Shilpa, for marketing, what do you look for? Okay, uh, so for marketing, I'm considering both the parts, UA and brands, because uh, it is it is uh, very very easy for brand person to move into uh, UA part and uh, vice versa. So marketing is uh, different. So there are uh, hard skills for particular functions. Then there are soft skills for being a team, a team player, communication, all those things. But uh, for for uh, gaming marketing domain, hard skills are same, uh, exactly same, exactly replicable because you are running your campaigns either on brand side or on UA side. They are same, exactly same. But what is different? Difference is earlier. As a marketer, you were studying the brain of your person, uh, your target audience, from other perspective, and now you are considering that brain, which you have to capture attention from, from gaming perspective, and that's where the difference comes. So I would want somebody who is who is willing to get into that side of marketing brain from gamer perspective because they are bombarded with a lot of ads. They are bombarded with a lot of ideas. They are constantly you know, playing games. So somebody who understands the gaming mind is, is a very, very specific skill set which is required for gaming thing. So who, uh, in terms of measurable skills, somebody who is a gamer, somebody who can deconstruct a lot of gaming ideas, as well as somebody is, who is data oriented. Because uh, here there is very, very thin line, but and very, very small portion of product which comes into marketing. Why? Because you, uh, you know, you involve few features in terms of organic download, uh, sorry, organic growth loop in your product. So, so that your uh, K factor is very, very high, which is virality factor. Apart from that, there are a lot of small features which are doing really good. Your data shows that it is doing really good. You can take inspiration from those for your campaigns. Okay, so somebody who understands those perspectives also. Generally, in traditional marketing role, this does not happen. But in gaming marketing role, it does happen because you take insight from your game. And uh, with the uh, advent of uh, you know um, fake ads um, and ban on fake ads, now uh, people cannot run behind uh, the pin pulling ads. So you must have seen one big company pulling pin ads, and then you see that every other company. Uh, after that big company, every other company would run this test. Why? Because we only have three seconds. If two seconds is already captured by somebody, I would want to leverage that. So here the uh, competency to do a deep uh, competitive analysis is, is very, very important. And uh, dissecting it from uh, marketing and gaming perspective is something very intangible. So what I usually do is I give... Uh, you know, uh, ad hoc task that like, you know, this is the top running um, ads on the internet for this particular week because the campaigns are a little smaller. Okay, and uh, what do you think that why it is okay? And what are the similar ideas? So, idea generation, very, very creative mindset you would require. And a marketing person has to work with product and design team because they would be the base of those ideas. And so, whenever um, you know, some design idea or some feature ideas, which let's say did not pass some test in actuality, they can be an inspiration. So somebody who is into marketing, they have to understand this from other domain perspective also. So it's, it's extremely intangible, but in terms of hard skills, it is uh, transferable skills. And for people who knows their uh, marketing M and, and branding and uh, UA part, they are, they are good to come. And because these things they can learn and it's easy, but inclination is very much required. Yeah, I see. I think I also said, you know, I had the same vein in our answers. Like we have uh, to have our domain expertise or at least an understanding. But, you know, being able to wrangle data and being a gamer are just two things that are required for our industry. So I definitely see commonalities there. Uh, we are at time, but there is one question from PL. So I'll take that real quick. 
and that's what Purnima. It says, what are Purnima's thoughts on reoccurring purchases and the best ways to achieve this in a product? Wow, that, that's a topic in itself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, um, so I would say from a player perspective, uh, it, it works, right? I mean, this is clearly for a free-to-play mm-hmm. game. And uh, the reoccurring purchases are a nice way to consume in bits. Uh, it's it's pretty much like what you might buy as a regular grocery. Uh, like you you know you need so much tomatoes, but uh, you still don't buy them in so much of a bulk, right? You're going to consume it in bits and pieces, see how much you're going to kind of use it, and then see if you want to buy it again. And then this time you kind of know how much you do you use on a regular basis. And then you mm-hmm. will try to buy a different pack or a smaller or a larger pack. So it allows you to do that. And oftentimes I, I kind of uh, put game design and real life in together perspective. And I think you can uh, work it together. Uh, so mm-hmm. I think re- recurring purchases comes from like things we do. And then it has been brought into gaming uh, because of player behavior of how consumer behave with working towards this. And that's exactly mm-hmm. why we put it. And technically, this is also quite in alignment with what PMs are working towards. So I, I would like them to step in and talk from that perspective as well. Got it. Uh, just, to, just to any closing thoughts, current from the PM side, just a couple of lines. Um, yeah, I think uh, recurring purchases is all about uh, uh, creating recurring value. I think if mm-hmm. I have to sum it up in one line. Yeah. Um, how do you consistently uh, keep creating value? And and if there is value, the purchase will happen. Like, yeah. uh, and like yeah. Purnima says, <laughs> there's a whole <laughs> series of tasks behind how to create value. Yeah, but, I know, right? Uh, hey, if there's interest, maybe JK can help us, uh, you know, do another uh, talk in a, few, in a few months where we do monetization, subscriptions versus IAP and versus ads. So it's a great <laughs> idea, Vic. We'll have everybody back on. So please make sure to sign up for... Uh, to, to, to the email list and we'll email about the next sessions. But yeah, let's let's keep it going. Let's have additional focus talks on various topics. 